Hello everyone and welcome to a new virtual pet video. In this video I'll be reviewing the Digimon Accelerator or most commonly known as the Digimon Excel. Now I have previously mentioned this virtual pet in an older video where I also spoke about the mini but this time let's just focus on the Digimon Accelerator. So the Digimon Accelerator was released in four versions so I have one of each version so we have the Justice Genome and the Evil Genome, which were both released on the same day. Then a couple of months later, they released the Nature Genome and the Ultimate Genome. So each version, similar to other virtual pets, has different Digimon that you can raise on the, uh, on the device. The Accelerator was also released alongside these cards, and one would come packaged with uh, each of them. So you may remember that in the IC and Burst video, I mentioned the, uh, the DNA scanning functionality. And the accelerator has the same sort of functionality, and these cards serve the same purpose, where you scan them here, and you will either get some DNA to help trigger evolution, or a weapon, which I believe is not one, yep, weapon, or maybe a random assortment of weapons or DNA depending on what card you use. And how to use this is that you pick up your accelerator and you'll notice that you have some scanning um, prongs here. And these are different from your battling prongs. So I've got this one on, so this is my evil genome. And you go to DDP, which is what these chips are called, and you press them here, like so, and then you scan the DNA from that chip. Which I also already have nine dragon DNA, so you can't have more than nine, which is kind of a little bit annoying, but it's the same as the IC and burst. And also, you can also just scan DNA from your hand, which you press in some prongs with uh, your fingers. Uh, there's a it's, I think it's triggered by static charge, uh, but if your hands are cold, you'll not be able to get uh, DNA from that scan because it'll ju it won't be able to uh, detect your finger. It'll just stay on that level where you can't scan that level. But if you have slightly warmer hands, you'll see that depending on how you put your finger, different bars will show up and different bars will relate in... Uh, will have different energy that you can get from that scan. So that's fairly cool. Another thing is that it also has a very similar evolution um, mechanic to the IC and the Burst. However, while the IC and the Burst had uh, allowed you to have care mistakes to determine what Digimon you'll get, the XL doesn't pay attention to care mistakes at all. It only relates to what DNA that you feed your Digimon. And you could take the worst care or the best care, but provided you give your Digimon the right amount of DNA, your Digimon will evolve. And the only real way to kill it is to just not evolve it and just leave it sitting there for a couple of days. So there are there's time limits to your evolution, but there's not um, it, it's not as uh, easy to kill them as uh, previous uh, virtual pets that uh, were in the series. So that one's fairly unique, and it's one of the only virtual pets that doesn't really take care mistakes into consideration, which makes it kind of unique in a way. Another fairly unique mechanic is the fact that you can take off the faceplate here and swap this little piece of paper here, and uh, you can print out your own, or you can customise it, or you can buy specially made uh, skins for it, or you can just use it without. And uh, yeah, so that's a pretty nice uh, customizable faceplate. And Tamagotchi also had uh, has had similar. And Digimon haven't really ever had um, much of a customizable functionality, but it was really nice to see that uh, you could customize these. You also notice that this is how you access the uh, the battery. It's not on the back; it's actually on the front. Which again, it's it's fairly new, but I guess because they wanted to use this uh, behind the skin part. I think that's fairly cool to keep that battery out of the way. So that's a fairly nice mechanic. 
Also, the design is big. You might notice that this is a lot bigger. Let's take the uh, let's take a, um, a, a brick for example. It's a lot bigger. You can't just sort of. It doesn't have a keychain. Does have a slot for a charm, but I can't imagine you wanting to hang this off your pot, your pants or something as you might with the uh, with the brick. So yeah, this is the Digimon Accelerator. I it was actually one of the first virtual pets I actually imported. I got the evil genome back in university, I think, uh, because they were fairly cheap on eBay, and I wanted a Digimon, and I was trying to get back into virtual pets, but I was a poor university student, so the Axel was really all I could get. And then a couple of years later, I um I completed my collection when I had a job, and now I have all four. So I. I was really a fan of this. I really like the fact that you don't, the care mistakes don't really um, factor into the evolution. However, now I have more experience with virtual pets. I'm, I kind of see that as a, um, a negative, not just a positive. So it's, it's kind of like I'm, I'm sort of split between is um, are care mistakes a good mechanic to have? And it just means that the accelerator is not as interesting as. Um, previous virtual pets because it's not challenging at all like it's uh it, it has the um the limit that you can only feed it a certain amount of dna every day and you can track how much dna you have fed it by going to the stats and looking at whatever dna you fed it so i haven't fed um matadom on here any dna but you can only feed it a certain amount each day and if you don't feed it one day you can obviously that that can result in your Digimon dying. So that's obviously bad. So it does have the possibility to not be um not be particularly easy, but that's the only thing that makes it hard. Another thing is you'll notice that, and I mentioned this in another video about the XL I've done, is that it's a three-pronged device, which limits the connectivity with other devices. You can only battle it with the mini and any three prong devices and there weren't that many uh bandai went back to the old uh, two prongs a couple of years after so we didn't really see much else also the pen x also has three prongs if i i think if I, yeah pen x does so it's kind of weird that they have the sort of bunch of three prong devices that just aren't as um connective as uh as all the other virtual pets Look, there's a couple of other things I'll just mention before I give the review. One that's um, it's got a training and battle mode, so you can train to obviously increase your strength. And there's also the quest mode where you go around a map and fight Digimon, which is um, it's fairly nice. It was one of the first times this sort of thing was implemented. The first being with the Pendulum Progress, if I recall correctly. But the map is a uh, is a fairly new idea. The areas where you can choose what area to complete but more or less it's just it's the same as the IC or the burst which I would say that the Axel is just a worst version of the IC so something I like is that you can go to sound here and you can turn on the sound nice to have that in the menu rather than pressing buttons however it means if you want to mute it you have to go through all those sounds another thing is speaking of sounds I actually do like the sounds it makes it sort of it has a nice melody to it. It's not just beeping. And when your Digimon dies, instead of the high-pitched ringing that the original does, as in the brick, it actually makes a sort of wow, wow, wow noise. And it just sort of plays that, which is a lot... It's still annoying, but it's not as bad as a high-pitched beep that doesn't really change its um its tone at all. So that's fairly cool. And I just like the sounds it makes... It makes, um, it's not, yeah, as I said, it's not just high pitched beeping. You can battle on it, obviously, but only three pronged devices, as I said. You can also trade DNA, which is fairly cool. And you can also jogress. However, the jogress functionality is, um, is fairly limited. There's only a few Digimon that have the ability to jogress. It's not like, um, the Pendulum, for example, where a lot of Digimon can jogress. This one is uh, fairly limited in that way. Also, I do like the big sprites. I like the menu, which is is common for the big big screens. 
Uh, what else is there to say about the XL? Um, I'm sure I'll think of many things once I finish this video, as I usually do. But it is... It's kind of a fun virtual pet, but the Digimon that are on it kind of don't make much sense. For example, the evil genome has Digimon that I would not classify as being evil. We have Digimon like Angewomon and uh, Marine Angemon, for example. So it feels more like they picked a sort of some basic uh, Digimon that fit in the, with the theme, like uh, Nature has Falcomon, um, Justice has uh, has Leomon, and Ultimate has um, Kudamon, and uh, the evil one has um, Dracumon, which is the sort of demon-looking guy. And also Commandramon, which I really like Commandramon because he's just Ogamon with guns, he's kind of adorable. Anyway, so it kind of feels like, besides those sort of evolution lines, the other Digimon in it are fairly random. For example, Rosemon is in the nature genome. Uh, Palmon is in... Palmon and Togemon are both in the ultimate genome. So that makes it feel kind of um, a little bit random. And uh, some Digimon I just do not see fitting in any of the uh, any of the genomes, but they're there because they are, I guess. But that's fine, because there's also a lot of Digimon who haven't really been in other virtual pets. We have Penmon, which is the penguin, which is fairly cool. That's in, I believe, the evil genome. We have Submarimon, which is kind of fun to have an armor Digimon. I think we have a few armor Digimons in these, actually, now I think about it. It's just got a sort of nice, sort of random amount of Digimon that I wouldn't usually expect to see in a virtual pet, but it's kind of nice to, again, Commandramon being there is kind of cool. And, um, yeah, it sort of has, obviously, Digimon you'd expect. There's Tentamon, there's, um, there's Palmon, there's uh, Mugendramon, who I feel like is in a lot of virtual pets. I, feel, I should make a list of how many virtual pets that Mugendramon's in because I feel like it's all of them. Uh, it's, it's not, but it's, it feels like it's most of them. And, um, yeah, there's not much else to say. I like the sort of... I think it's like based on one of those old tape recorders because it's got like this trigger here and it's got this part here and it just reminds me of um, like a, a tape recorder from many, many years ago. It reminds me of that sort of general shape. But, uh, yeah, they're very big. They're probably one of the biggest virtual pets in terms of size. It's about the same size as the Penex, but then it's a lot thicker. It's kind of... It's, yeah, it's got the thickness of, like, a brick, but the size of a, um, of a Penex, which makes it kind of bulky. You have to sort... You can't just slip it in a small pocket. You have to actually put it somewhere. It's about as big as my phone, which I can show you the phone case. I can't show you the phone because it's recording at the moment. So it's just a little bit smaller than a, a mobile phone. So that's kind of... Yeah, it's, it's a weirdly shaped device, and it's fairly unique... But it's it's kind of weird. It's the evolution mechanics make it feel boring. It doesn't have any real challenge to it because you can just scan DNA to um, to get any Digimon that you want. Obviously, um, there's still evolution paths. Not all Digimon like all Digimon won't evolve into the same Digimon, which has that going for it. At least you can still have some form of path, which doesn't make it entirely boring but it just makes it a lot less interesting as other virtual pets. Having said that, I do actually enjoy it. So when I say that my enjoyment rating is fairly low, um, that doesn't mean I necessarily hate it. I actually do kind of like it. However, it's just, it's a lot more boring. It doesn't have, I, I, I won't I won't play this as long as I will, I have for um, a brick, for example, or a pendulum, or even the DM 20th. I feel like those are a lot, they're a lot more enjoyable to play. You can play them for a lot longer. These ones, I find that maybe after one egg cycle, you might not want to start the egg again. You might feel like, hey, that that's done, which is fair enough. I just there's not a lot of um, enjoyment to it. The quest mode is okay. It was obviously improved in later devices. So my enjoyment out of ten would have to be four. Now that feels kind of low, and that's just because. The amount of care mistakes really removes any um, any sort of challenge or any level of enjoyment. Would I recommend these? Well, yeah, I would, 
but they're not as um not as cheap as they used to be. Uh, you can still find them for probably under a hundred dollars, which is not terrible. But if you have a hundred dollars to spend on a virtual pet, I'd recommend getting maybe a, a pendulum or something. So not necessarily these, but if the idea of not having care mistakes appeals to you, definitely I would recommend these, especially if you like the IC or the Burst. They're very similar to that, but uh, without the cute items that you can put on your Digimon's head, which I really like, and obviously the accelerator has that uh, has that big screen, so big sprites, which I'm also a fan of. I really hope that uh, we see more big sprite virtual pets as we haven't really had one since probably the... I can't remember, the, I think the Pen X came around the same time as the XL, but I can't remember what came first. But for like 15 years, we haven't had any big sprite virtual pets that I can immediately think of. So yeah, it's been like the Pen Prog, the Pendulum X, and then the XL, and uh, I guess the D Cyber as well, if you count it. But uh, anyway, in terms of ease of use, I would have to go with 9 out of 10. Uh, it is very easy to use. It doesn't basically play itself like the um, like the Avachi or any of the the Tamagotchi um, nanos, but it's um, yeah, it's 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 fine. It's not my favorite virtual pet, even though it was at one point. Um, I definitely think there's a lot of unique qualities to it, which is why I appreciate it. But in terms of enjoyment, I can't really give it anything more. I feel like a four is harsh. But if I look at my other ratings, I've given the Mini a 5, and I feel like this is just a little... Like, it's on the same level as the Mini, but the lack of challenge really brings it down, and that sort of hurts it. But it is a fun virtual pet if you're looking for something unique that's a little bit different from the other virtual pets. So that's all I really have to say about the XL, at least all that I can think of. And, uh, yeah, so... Oh, before I finish off this is actually the first video that I've I'm going to be doing that has an end card at the end of the video so that's fun I think I've put in a couple of end card things in previous videos but I make I've made a custom special end card uh, that hopefully will not look terrible so I guess uh, stay tuned for that because that'll be shortly after me signing off so thank you for watching and let me know if you have any experience with the Digimon XL. What do you think of it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Please let me know. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!